having made some serious, uh, having achieved some serious success on Wednesday last week at Prime Minister's Questions, Keir Starmer seems to have followed it up with perhaps muted uh, success over the weekend by writing in the Sunday Telegraph. However, however, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, he also did a an interview with Esquire magazine, which uh, posted this photograph, uh, this, this, this photograph here, this photograph here. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm sure you'll, you, you'll agree. It's a splendid photograph. It, it reminds you of Christine Keeler, doesn't it? In, uh, in, in the, um, in, in, in the whole, um, profumo, uh, affair. Uh, that's the pose sitting on the back of a chair like that. And, uh, the, the corresponding paragraph I think is worth reading. The Right Honourable, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party and His Majesty's opposition since 2020, and according to all polls, Britain's Prime Minister in waiting, is a solidly built 61-year-old white man with a purposeful stride and plausible manner of a senior manager, which is, in a way, exactly what he is. If Starmer in person projects anything you might not catch in his not always scintillating media appearances, it's an intense focus. He's businesslike. He's competent. He's on message to his dis to his detractors. This is his curse. He's too serious and insufficiently charismatic to be prime minister. To his boosters, it's a gift. He is serious, as he should be in his position. He's dignified. That's what's required. He's not here just for the photo op. He's not interested in fame for its own sake. He's here to fix things, to make a difference. He's also here for the photo op. And... Uh, as a result of his serious interjection on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph, uh, the Guardian today says this was uh, a tactical foray into enemy territory and is understandable, but a mistake. How did Labour get here? In truth, because of one very good reason and one really bad one. The good one is Starmer, and the bad one, well... Uh, the, bad, the bad one is that it's misreading the mood and uh, because Starmer is listening to focus groups of swing voters rather than uh, listening to his own core body. And, uh, and, and, and in the process of having a good week, he's done something foolish and he's triggered the Thatcher word. And I, I, I think, I think again, that there's a lot of hostility to Mrs. Thatcher, partly drummed up by the media and the media imprint of Thatcher. The reality is that uh, a lot of the laws that were passed under Thatcher and then Major, particularly the laws uh, regarding uh, trade unionism and striking, were not repealed when Tony Blair came into office were not repealed even by Gordon Brown. So if they were so heinous, and if all of Labour so object to them, why didn't they do anything about it at that point? They had plenty of time. They had 13 years to change the things that they felt were wrong about Thatcher. But in fact, they uh, acted on the principle that Thatcher... Uh, Thatcherism was an acceptable reality, a fact. Now, I hope that Keir Starmer isn't going to take the same attitude to Rwanda. So if the emergency legislation goes through on Thursday, I trust Keir Starmer is going to do everything he can in his first week as Prime Minister to repeal that law and to, uh, and to try to restore our relationship with Europe. I suggest he has two jobs to do immediately. Repeal Rwanda and return the Elgin Marbles. Uh, I think those two things would go a long way to repairing some of the reputational damage done oddly by one man, by Rishi Sunak, in the same way as oddly so much of the damage that, uh, that that one man is repairing was done by one woman uh, together with uh, together with Kwasi Kwarteng, uh, Liz Truss, in a matter of a month. It doesn't take long to wobble the ship of state. 
And uh, an impulsive law, the problem with an impulsive law is once it's there, is it more dangerous to repeal it than to simply let it run its course? And that, I suspect, was the decision taken by Blair, taken by Gordon Brown, taken by most incoming governments. It requires a great deal of effort to repeal a law. And that's why, that's why the opposition should be significantly more effective. And that's why it's not just a matter of point scoring. And that's why we need uh, Keir Starmer's um, promise that this law will be overturned. Because without that, I don't think I don't think he's going to get all those um, swing Tories to vote for him, and without that, he won't get into power, and there will be a a limp conservative majority, or a uh, or, or or the Conservatives will be the largest party.